Hey, how they hanging down, dudes? It's me, the Media Raptor, and you're probably wondering, you know, why this? Why not continue the theme month you were doing? I'm just trying to get the lighting a bit better in here. Is that better? No, that just seems worse. Yeah, I'm gonna be honest, uh, Watch Dogs Month is going to extend a bit into April because the videos I make, they take far longer to edit altogether, including all the footage and timing up the audio. Frankly, there's just a lot more work than I thought they would be, and I want them to be good. I want to take time and make sure they're done right and not rushed. So, for like the two of you who actually care or even are watching them because they don't have many views, No Compromise will be coming soon, and then my top things I want to see in Watch Dogs 3 will be coming soon after. But I decided let's take a break and review a movie that I have been pumped for since it came out. Pacific Rim Uprising. So why am I, instead of just waiting till the end of the week, why am I, you know, gonna review Pacific Rim when I was already doing a theme month? Simple. Views. The iron's hot and I intend to strike it. Why did it take me this long to get to reviewing it? Well, I saw it on opening night, which was actually my birthday, which was pretty lit. And it, you know, probably know I was having a good time if I'm willing to say stuff like lit. But... Yeah, I saw it at like a 10 o'clock showing, and then a bunch of the guys I was with, we all went out just to hang out and just chill, and then we came back and started trying to play Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, I can barely figure out how to play this, but it's a lot of fun. So let's just jump and go ahead and just jump into Pacific Rim 2. If you guys don't remember, and I'm pretty sure most of you don't, Pacific Rim was one of the earliest reviews I did. It was... Back in the time when I would actually, instead of having the theme song, I would just have a drawn image with a song and a very basic iMovie text effect saying the Media Raptor Reviews, starring the Media Raptor, and that was it. But I talked about how it was great, it was action-packed, and at the time it was one of my favorite movies. And I knew there was going to be a sequel after I saw the first one. It was pretty clear there was going to be. But what I was uh, wondering is how was the sequel going to be? Keep in mind, there will be some minor spoilers here, but most of it, you can kind of tell just from watching the movie, you can kind of know. Well, I'll get to that in a minute. So, the movie itself is fantastic. Let me start by saying that. We have only one returning cast member for a very short time, I think you can guess why. And no, it's not Charlie Hooman, which was too bad, because he was greater. I can't pronounce his last name, I'm sorry. Uh, anyhow... We have entirely new cast, new director, new writers, and often in a sequel, that means it's gonna suck. Like, it... If you're gonna make a sequel to a movie and you have no one who worked on the original, that as far as I could tell, maybe they had the same writers or something, but when I could tell it was all new people, that's usually not a good sign. But, Pacific Rim Uprising was great. There goes my D20. Uh, it managed actually to rise up against the potential of being just another Hollywood blockbuster movie they're trying to make in the middle of March while they're waiting because they know everyone's gonna get butt hit by Avengers and Black Panther, which is currently at this point overtaking the Avengers in terms of box office growth. Gross. Suck on that, haters. Uh, but yeah, Pacific Rim manages to be a great sequel. It does everything in a sequel that you would want. What does it do? Well, it continues to expand on the world. For one thing, I've talked about this in Watch Dogs, is what makes a good sequel. We know that the kaiju have come and attacked. We know that, okay, yes, they destroyed cities and all that. But what does it mean after they're gone? What happens then? It's interesting because there goes my D4. I'm just dropping everything today. Uh, we have, like, whole scenes where they're in junkyards, when they're in destroyed kaiju rem no, destroyed Jaeger remains. We have people just trying to survive. We have junkers, essentially, from Overwatch in the world of Pacific Rim. The plot, it's not what you would think. It is not just, oh, by the way, the portal's open again and they're coming through for some reason. They actually do something quite different, something that was a bit surprising. Sure, it was kind of predictable, but it wasn't like from the word go, you knew it was going to happen. They actually were good at uh, just avoiding most of the cliches. Yes, they still have some cliches like, oh, the new character who doesn't follow the rules does something and people get hurt, they get kicked out but then immediately brought back in. Thing is, they know they have it, and I, yes, I know acknowledging your flaws does not mean your flaws are gone, but they at least decided we're not going to focus on that. We're not going to drag these scenes out, like three minutes at most, and then we're back to what makes this movie good. We're back to the good characters, and we're back to the awesome fighting scenes. And yeah, I like the new characters a lot. Sure, it's kind of weird that the main character... 
forget his name, I'm sorry. Uh, John Boyega's character. Shoot, what was his name? It's not like he was forgettable. He was really memorable. It's whatever. It's weird that he wasn't in the first one. There wasn't even a mention of him. But I kind of get sequels got a sequel. And I think they did it pretty well. They actually did explain what he was doing. And it makes sense within the context of the actual franchise of their world. Uh, I love the new kaiju designs. Yes, there are kaiju in this movie. I love the new Jaeger designs. I love the new weapons. I love the new characters. I love the new fighting styles. One thing about this movie, which you do kind of want to know, is it's kind of, it's it's very much like the original. Like they're very much one and the same. As in, there are some scenes that tend to get a little dull, or a couple scenes where they're trying to build characters, but it's pretty clear even the actors know we're here for the giant monsters. So yes, you do have to sit through some stuff, and at one point in the theater, and this is kind of a spoiler, but this is a good thing, I was sitting there thinking, okay, at this point in the first movie, we had a giant kaiju with wings flying them into outer space. Where's the wow scene here? Because there were plenty of them, but I was waiting for that big wow scene at the end. And they knocked it right out of the park in ways I could not expect, that I am not going to spoil because it is so awesome. Uh, like I said, characters are great. You know, the cliches are there, but they do move along pretty quickly, and yeah, you kind of got to do it. Every story's got cliches. The acting is great. There was not a single bad actor in this. The No, actually, there are three returning actors. Two of them are great, and the other one, she has a good job. Uh, the new actors are great. The CG is freaking amazing. You can tell it's it's all fake, obviously. Like they didn't they didn't build giant robot suits and get giant genetically made lizards, but it looks real. And the fight scenes are fight scenes are awesome. One thing I didn't really talk about in the last Pacific Rim review, and I thought about re-reviewing it before I saw this, but didn't get around to it, is most of the fight scenes are at night. And that can make it occasionally kinda hard to see. Because they were at night or in the uh, in the water. Here, most of it takes place in cities, and there are a lot more, instead of just punching or grabbing something and hitting them with it, they have a giant flail, they have chainsaw swords, they have a giant laser whip. Like, they, they make sure that everything is better, fight scene-wise. Now, yes, one thing which I liked about the previous one... Uh, hang on, where'd that go? Oh, there it is was this whole idea of drifting meant you had to mentally be able to communicate and focus with someone else. In this one, they kind of seem to avoid that. Yes, the main character and this other guy, it's clear they don't like each other at first, but pretty quickly they warm up back to each other and they do great fighting together. But the new recruits, there's one scene where the main new female girl and one of the other, the other female recruit, they get into a massive pissing contest with one another. And you're thinking, okay, so they're going to have to force them to work together. That's going to be great. They just skip that all together. Don't even worry about it, man. Don't trip, dog. And you're kind of like, okay, I feel kind of cheated. But then it's like, oh, sweet giant fight scene. I don't care about that stuff. I want to see robots punching giant monsters. And we get plenty of that. So, while the CG is phenomenal, the acting is great, the story is decent. It's enough to get you there. Is there anything really bad about it? Namely the cliches. I'm one of those few people that can just ignore cliches altogether, and normally I wouldn't let that affect my review, but I'm trying to become better at film reviews, so I kind of got to mention them. So, if you're one of those people that notices them pretty easily, some of them will probably drive you a bit crazy. But for the most part, Pacific Rim 2 does everything you would want. They even expand upon why the kaiju came here in the first place, like why they were showing up where they were, what the alien's plan was. Yeah, you gotta sit through some scenes that can be kind of dull, or jokes that try to be funny but really aren't that funny, but... For what you get, it is more than worth the price of admission. Not ch and because I don't want to spoil it, but the final fight makes the entire thing worth it. I've been sitting here for... I'd have to guess maybe 10, 8, 10 minutes, just talking about how great it is. I am giving Pacific Rim Uprising a solid three and a half Raptor Claws out of four. You guys, go check it out. It is great. It is fun. And I really hope they make a sequel because the way they ended it, it doesn't end with it saying, oh, like there's some big threat looming over us that we still haven't defeated. They're like, no, we've defeated the threat. Now let's do something else. And the way it ends sets up what could be the best sequel yet. And if you're not going to do a sequel in the film, give it an animated series.
please. Just don't, just don't forget about this. This is really a great franchise, or at least it has potential to be a great franchise, and I hope we see more of it in the future. With that being said, you guys, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you like and subscribe. And if you want to be featured in my videos or you want a free shout-out, just comment down below what I should review next. And if I end up reviewing that, I'll give you a shout-out, your channel and all of it. So, with all that, you guys, until next time, Dino Dudes, this is the Meteor Raptor saying keep cool, and I'll see all you Dino Dudes around. Later.